Net Events in Saratoga opened with a keynote from Martin Casado, a man who sold his company, Nisera, to VMware for over $1.2 billion. Nisera developed software-defined networking technology, so it was no surprise that Casado started his speech by talking about how large technology companies, such as Google and Facebook, built their own data centers and moved technology that was previously in the network into software. So things like security, things like fault isolation, things like billing, things like visibility and debugging, instead of being traditionally put in hardware in the network, they were moved into software. And there's a lot of good reasons for doing this. If it's in software, you can evolve it more quickly. If it's in software, you've got more context because you're closer to the application. He then asked how ordinary companies, companies that aren't Google, for example, could get the benefits of scalability and cost efficiency that software-defined networks bring. The answer is network virtualization. So now the idea is I can deploy any application I can attach it to one of these virtual abstractions, and the application thinks it's running on a physical network. But these abstractions have the operational model of a VM. You can create them dynamically. You can grow them or shrink them or move them around or do whatever you want. So now, from a high level, you have the same types of characteristics of the Googles and the Facebooks and the Yahoos, which is you have functionality that's written in software that provides all of the operations. You can use any type of hardware that you want but you're gluing it to these applications in the way that they know about. So is anyone actually deploying software-defined networking now? So for example, um, I mean, last quarter, I think we had, uh, we had um, uh, I found uh, two customers that adopted network virtualization that I'd never spoke to, nobody on my team had ever spoken to, and then when I talked to the sales guy that sold it to them, he didn't know what network virtualization was. So it's like the first example where you actually have a pull or a draw that's coming from the field. And you ask why that is. Well, it's because it's they're starting to understand this stuff, right? I mean, all the big companies are talking about it now. There's general education. And so a lot of times I think people view kind of SDN and network virtualization as this existential threat, right? This thing that's coming and whatever. But you know, largely it's here. We've got the use cases, we've got the proof points. And so it's been interesting to me is to watch the evolution of the use of this. You know, you're starting off in provisioning, you're starting off with a simple use case, but more and more, it's become security, actually, that's driving a lot of the sales of this. So security is a key use case, and that's because there are few controls on the network within the data center. Why? It's very difficult to control a terabit worth of bandwidth. That's why we build boxes and we put them on the perimeter. So what's the state of data center networking today? We've got this marginal line of middle boxes that we put on the perimeter, and we've got where all the valuable stuff is kind of, you know, attackers have unfettered access to. So the more we can develop technologies within the data center to add controls, to do things like micro-segmentation and limiting the attack service, the better position that we are in protecting the data center and the assets within it. And this has become, I think, the driving use case going forward. And as things like SDN and network virtualization cross the chasm, I think it's, it's security that's going to do it. Casado then described exactly how open a data center network is, how easy it is to compromise, and how SDN can help fix that. So the idea is you can use network virtualization as a primitive, as building blocks to build micro segments. And if I put something within one of those virtual networks or within one of those segments, the only thing that it can see are also in those segments. So for example, I can create, for every application, I can create a virtual network, I can give it its own security services, I can give it its own L4 through 7 services, and if it gets compromised, the attack gets localized to just that. So this is kind of driving a lot of the adoption of network virtualization, which is cool. Again, as a technologist, you come up with these core architectures and you come up with these core products, and then it starts getting driven into areas that you hadn't really anticipated. Casado then gave the audience of press and analysts his vision of how data center security should work. We've been looking at the trends of security. So what are they? Well, security spend is outpacing IT spend, right? So the only thing that seems to be outpacing Security spend is security losses. <laughs> it's, like, it's like we're losing this battle. We can't spend our way out of the battle. And like, to me, like, this is opportunity, and there's something fundamentally architecturally wrong. What's needed, he said, is a way of bridging the gap between the perfect security provided by isolation between applications 
and total openness with no security. Now that most workloads are virtualized, there is a way. If you could use the hypervisors, the hypervisors is in a separate trust domain. If you could use the hypervisor to both peer into the application to pull out meaningful context, like users and applications and what things are doing, but also protect that visibility and provide protected enforcement, you kind of have this, this, this optimal place where you have like a, both this visibility and context and the isolation. I think that this actually cuts across like many areas of security. And every time I, now I go through a new vertical in security, so security always seems to be like a litany of stuff. You know, it's kind of these different verticals that are tightly or loosely coupled. But if you look at data center security, whether it's n-host security, whether it's network access control, whether it's vulnerability assessment, whether it's IDS or IPS, all of them would be affected by something like this. All of them need better isolation, and all of them need more context. So if we can build out this layer or this Goldilocks zone, I think we can actually move security in very much the same way that we have moved networking over the past seven years. I mean, I dedicated my life to STN, right? And I think that we have the same type of opportunity here. So finally, thanks to Martin for an amazing keynote, which was truly well received by the world's top technology press, representing more than 25 countries around the globe.